Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and today I'm coming at you from a bit of land I formerly could not stand on. It's very windy so I hope you don't pick up too much on the mic but this area of land that I'm here at the moment is only land because there used to be a water level that was higher than this. Because I don't know of a drought since I've been away probably, um, the water level of Lake Aranel has gone down so much that what you see behind me used to be under the lake. In fact, I think if you're on the banks up there, you can see guava trees, right? There was a flooded area during the wet season where it went actually that high to where my fingers is there in respect to those trees over there. It went actually that high. So I would be, uh, I'd be well submerged if I was uh, there um, at that point. But it does mean that I can go and walk in an area where I have, you know, like I say, I've never been before and I can get a nice away from everyone, away from everything video with some nice scenery because I can just do a twirl and you can see, I mean, look at that, some nice, big, spacious views of the lake. This is great, man. So it is, as I speak, the 20th of May, 2023. And what I would like to talk about in this video is um, a little adventure that I've had excuse the wind incidentally it's making my hair look crazy yeah yes an adventure that i've had over the course of the last six months it was around about november 2022 i got a tax bill for seventeen thousand pounds and i thought no this can't possibly be right so i told my accountant about it and he laughed his head off he just laughed his head off he goes ah, ha, 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 ha. and i thought Oof. well if he's laughing then maybe I'm not in as much trouble as I feared I would be. It just so turned out, some idiot ticked the wrong box. Now, I don't know, diversity hire, I don't want to accuse them of being that, but some idiot ticked the wrong box and ticked gross turnover, they didn't tick net income. And as a result, I've been worried that HMRC have been going to be coming after me for a bill I don't owe. And I was relieved, actually, to finally get the revised version only the other day to tell me that I didn't own that at all. After all, however, they'd already sold the debt based on their mistake to a debt collecting agency, which then means that I've had to complain to a debt collection agency and send them the new revised tax bill to them in the hope that they find out that they are barking up the wrong tree as well. However, I don't expect that to resolve itself. I've probably got another three or six months of that to deal with. However, I don't live in the UK anymore. I've burnt my bridges there. I've moved out. So the only thing connecting me to the UK is a post box address, a virtual post box address. And that's it. I'm not there anymore, which is great. I don't want to go back there anymore. I'm glad to be shot of the place. I mean, how can I say? I like being from England. I like the memories that I've had. I like to go into those places. All you have to do is go and uh, watch the recent videos, the places I'll miss videos. And you'll see there's a lot of places in the UK that I was very happy to go to and revisit. And, you know, I will miss those places. I'll miss a lot of things about the UK. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. But do, I do not like the direction it's going in. I do not like the direction it's going in politically, demographically, economically, as far as rules and regulations in terms of losing its freedom, freedom of speech. In fact, insofar as that the... Oh, God, the institutions are all in chaos. I have a conclusion that I've come to about what I think is going on in the UK, um, what I've learnt from my, uh, you know, how to say, my six-month problem with HMRC, right? Now, I'm one of these people who did appeal and contest this, and eventually it sort of sorted itself out. I'm not just going to be all scared and all panicky and say, oh, I'll pay you anything for a quiet life. But you know what I think happened? I'll tell you what I think happened. I think a lot of people ha had this over the last year. I think there's an enormous amount of people out there where someone ticked the wrong box, probably because they were told to in secret. I can't prove it, right? But I believe that they did. And I think that the UK, you know, the HMRC and all these institutions are deliberately going out of their way to employ incompetent people and probably giving them the wrong information, all of that, so that they will tick the wrong boxes, excuse the wind. But anyway, I've got to turn around here, a little bit less windy. I don't know if you can see the volcano in the distance. It's not very, 
it's not very uh, the field of view is that's too much in makes everything so small but hey we'll try yes so anyway yes I think that they have deliberately gone out of their way to allow people who work for them to create these mistakes which always seem to be in their favour never in our favour and I reckon a lot of people um, didn't challenge it and um, got scared and paid tax bills that they didn't owe which I suppose would make the UK a kleptocracy it would mean that the UK now is a broken and unlawful state it is on its way to leaving the developed world now there'll be people out there that will say yes but uh, if you go to the real developed world or you go to real old communist countries or you go to real old this and real old that it's far worse than it, um, than it is here they'll say about that while being in England and I'll say yes but if you get a time machine and you go back 10, 20 years it's far worse now than it was then here without going to any of those countries and I think that what's happened now as the debt to GDP ratio now in the UK is that the, the UK owes more debt um, has more debt than it has GDP and it will never ever ever pay its debt off and there's no hope for the future and there's no way that the next generation can even accrue capital and of course the housing market is so high because of god knows how many the influx of people coming into the UK means that all new housing stock will just be bought up and um, no one will ever be able to afford to buy anywhere or you know buy property again the UK now will just become a country of serfs and of course because the, the UK is full of people from failed states it's on its way to becoming a failed state I don't give it very long I reckon it will not see the 21st century out before it is a, just a complete total economic basket case of a place I think the Western world at this point is finished and I think that anyone and everyone who can get out of the Western world should get out of the Western world because the Western world is gone you know the West as an idea is a good idea and I think that a lot of people like myself and like a lot of other people like me who have got out of the Western world <laughs> um, should uh, should take that idea with them take that idea with them and you know keep that idea going and um, update that idea and bring those ideas to wherever you go so the, the best of the West uh, as a concept can be um, you know can be can be sustained around the world and maybe one day We'll be able to come back and rescue the West. Hope so anyway, right? Now, of course, just like in the last video that I made, there's people like Richard Vopes who feels that he wants to stay and fight. And he's a proud Englishman who wants to stay and fight um, for what he considers to be sacred and considers to be good in England. And, I'm, you know, I actually a part of me is with him on that. And I think for those who do wish to stay and fight, good on you. I mean, rather you than me, but good on you, all right? Um, and if you can win, win this war, win this battle against the scumbags who've stolen the UK, stolen the Western world, you know, these uh, elites who don't have our interests at heart, not in any way whatsoever, and just wish to, um, you know, turn us into serfs or drones or robots or what have you, as they get rid of us all so that they can have uh, the travelling circuit, the air space and all of the rest of it to themselves forgive the wind I don't know what this is going to be like in post-production eh? but anyway yeah. yes those bastards who um, you know who are screwing with our world at the moment I hope that there will be enough of an uprising against them I hope that they don't implement half the things that they wish to try and I hope that half of the things that they do implement I hope can be unimplemented by the people and I hope that there will be enough of a backlash and I hope before it's too late at uh, 11.59 I hope that enough people in the West realise what they've got, why it's worth saving, you know, and that they fight for it and they get it back. But as for me, right now, I'm just utterly disillusioned with the Western world right now. And I just think that there is no hope. Once upon a time, you know, there was people like Maggie Thatcher and, um, you know, right, I know there's a lot of the conservative people out there that talk about how great she was and how we don't have anyone like her anymore because at least she was a conviction politician. She was not a favourite of mine, not by any stretch of the imagination, but she was a real person who said real things with a real personality. She wasn't just a, a corporate speak your weight machine um, non-entity, which is all we've had since Blair, you know? And now I'm looking at the state of British politics and what well, is Keir Starmer, who's got to be the most boring man who has ever 
created, you know, just the most boring person ever. It's getting very windy here, so I hope that you don't lose what I'm saying, right? I've got a very strong windshield on, so hopefully that will work. You see it there? Huge windshield. Anyway, so yes, you've got Keir Starmer, and the trouble is, if he gets in power, he's going to turn the UK into a social contract society. It's something it's never been before, which is a little bit too WEF for my liking. And maybe him being such a boring person is part of it, because you don't really associate boring with sinister, do you? That's the trouble, you see? So, you've got Rishi Bloody Sunak, who is just basically like an Agent Smith clone of Tony Blair, really. You know, that's how I describe him as being. Um, there's nothing about him at all, really. I mean, full stop, there's just nothing about him at all. Full stop. What else can be said? You know? Um, these people are just people who look good on TV and computer screens um, because of their slickness. They look good in the corporate context. They speak and act and behave in the corporate context. And that's all they really are, as their corporate entities and governments have colluded to create an upgraded version of Benito Mussolini's style fascism. And that's the sort of world that we got. And then, King Sausage Fingers. I got out less than a week after his coronation. And um, I even heard John Cleese say that he watched it and laughed because he thought it was like a Monty Python sketch. Well, yeah, you've got to get your laughs from wherever you can. Now they've made real comedy impossible, eh? So, I look at the state of the UK and I look at the state of the Western world and I think, just to hell with it. If this is the way it's going, to hell with it. There are other places to go to in the world. Go to those places if you can, if you can get a chance to. But if you can't get a chance to, and you are the sort of person who feels that you want to stay and fight, well, fair enough. I can't knock people like that. You know, why should I? I think uh, there is something there worth fighting for, if that's what you want to do. And I would urge all uh, my people, uh, of the people, how shall I say, that, uh, that are watching my videos, right? Think of it as like there's two teams. There's Team Niall and there's Team Richard, i.e. Richard Vobes, right? We're not adversaries, and we'd, we'd be friends in this situation. But Team Niall would be Exodus from the Western world as fast as you can, because it's fucked. Team Richard would be, no, we've got to stay, we've got to fight, we've got to protect what we've got to have. But we shouldn't be adversaries. We shouldn't be like polar opposites. We should, I suppose, be thinking that these are two plans. One is a plan to fight for the freedoms and wrest them back from uh, the people who are trying to take them away, which is Team Richard. And then, of course, there's Team Niall, which is get the fuck out of the West. Go somewhere you feel freer. Go somewhere where, as what's his name, Andrew Henderson from the Nomad Capitalist Channel says, go where you're treated best. Now, I think both of these schools of thought are, are equally, you know, worth considering, depending on your situation. If you can leave, you can leave. You know, but if you can't leave, then the best thing you can do is try to fight for what is right. And if it turns out that fighting for what is right doesn't work and the Western world falls and the UK falls to tyranny, then the thing is then, of course, is that the people like myself who have left the West will be able to keep the legacy ideas of the West going and maybe we'd be able to create a world or we'll be able to help create a new paradigm in some form or other which is like the West, a kind of post-West, non-local world, right? And maybe the emerging countries in the world, as the West falls, will be going in the right direction. And maybe they'll think, yeah, freedom of speech, freedom of the market, freedom of expression, no nanny state, all of that, you know, is worth having. We've never had that before. We're sad to see the West go. But hey, let's be what the West can't be anymore. And maybe one of those plans will work. It's like Elon wants us on Mars, apparently, because... Just in case the Earth gets hit by a meteor, we don't get wiped out. And I think, yeah, fair enough. Contingency plan. So, two plans, I reckon, in that sense. But for me personally, I'm glad to be short of that place. I mean, yeah, there are certain things I'll miss. Watch my places, I'll miss videos. And, uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean. But in the meantime, I'm going to start this new life. I don't know how sustainable this is going to be for me over time. And in, uh, in upcoming videos as I go into the future, I'm going to be shilling some of my ideas. Now, I'm not going to be bloody getting sponsored by anyone, and I'm not going to be reading off all that corporate, this channel is sponsored by bollocks stuff. Don't worry about that. However, you know, I want to try and see if I can get freelance work as a sound engineer, recorder, mixer, masterer. 
and um, I'm going to be talking about that in future videos and what my plans and my aspirations for um, are going to be for when it comes to that to that future so we'll have to see how that goes and um, you know if I have any musician um, followers or subscribers who make their own music and would like my services you never know it's worth a worth an ask in it and I'll do a good job if I can anyway right I shall leave you to it oh but first I've got to turn around and see this bit isn't it nice man it's so bloody nice to be back in Costa Rica I can't even begin to tell you you know <laughs> right anyway see you later alligator see you soon baboon if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.